Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I thank God that we are once again together um, for another word that God has placed on me, that he has been showing me confirmation after confirmation and then gave me even more revelation on it today. Um, after seeking his face, asking, you know, give me understanding and wisdom according to his knowledge so that I may be able to receive the revelation of what he is wanting me to deliver because, you know, um, we don't want to go off our own understanding. We want to seek God um, for everything. We want to ask him, you know, Lord, what do you, you keep giving me this scripture. What are you, what are you trying to say? What are you meaning? And God will give you the reg um, revelation. Um, just today, I was just listening to a word about um, asking God to receive and receiving um, the spirit of, I'm sorry, you guys, you know, my notes are all over the place. But yeah, I was just praying and asking God to, you know, receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Um, I wanted to give you guys scripture on, I thought I wrote it down. Oh, I did. It's Ephesians 1 through 16, and I'll read that for you um, real quick quickly and it says cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him so like I say we want to pray for God and ask God for the wisdom and knowledge and understanding and um, revelation of him because when he lays something on our heart, if he gives us a scripture, we want to give that scripture back to God and ask God, well, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that I can know what is of you and that he can start to minister to you what he's trying to speak to you. Um, and if you want to, you can go ahead and read that chapter yourself. It's, it's a pretty good chapter as well. Um, let's get back on track. So, God has been laying on me, like, the this scripture for a while. He's given me other, you know, videos where I probably spoke on it briefly. Because um, I do believe we are in the, la in the last days, that we are living in the last days. And, you know, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So we want to be aware of the enemy's tactics and the things that's going on and the fear tax tactics because that's that's a tactic of the enemy. It, you know, in these days times everything is more focused to fear mongering and putting fear in people because that's the, that's a tactic of the enemy. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, so that should show you that you should shut that down and take it into captivity because God didn't give us a spirit of fear. He didn't give us a spirit of worry or doubt. All those things are tactics of the enemy and we need to take them into captivity. We need to lay all our burdens. Just today, God would just give, gave me another word about putting, laying my burdens before him. I was listening to a word, but before I even listened to the word, this is how God will com confirm things. Um, he took me to the, let's see, Matthews 110 and Luke 325. I'm not going to read those scriptures, but it spoke about Amos and Amos is a word that means burden. And God says in Psalms 55, 22, cast thy burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He, sh he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Cast your burdens on the Lord. What, what is that doubt that's bothering you? What is that worry that is, that is, manipul that is manipulating and trying to come, become precedent in your life? What are those things that are, that are telling you and putting doubt in your mind? Cast them, bur give it all to the Lord. Give it to him today. Cast your burdens on the Lord. Give it to him. Cause he will take he will take that burden off for you off of you. Don't let the enemy continue to defeat you and and 
keep you in a mind state. And in the word that I was listening to, this is this is a great example of how she how she laid it down. Um, let's see here. First, her first example was like 365 times in the Bible. It says fear not. So we should know that fear is not of God. That is of Satan. God is telling you not to fear. God is telling us not to not to doubt. Because what she said, she said it is not. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment not to fear. Fear not. That is if he said that 365 times, God said not to fear. It's now because it's a commandment that he's commanding you. Don't fear. Don't fear the enemy because you already have authority over him. You understand me? You, see, Satan don't want you to know that. That's why he wants to keep you in doubt and fear and confusion. See, listen, God, God gave you authority over him. When, when, G, when, he, when Jesus died and he shed the blood and paid the price for you, Satan lost then. He, he, he lost all authority over you. He has no control over you. Take back your authority. Get, fight. Pray. Get on them knees. Speak in tongues. Whatever gifts God gave you, get it. Take it back violently. It's not. It's not. It's not a contest of who who looks the best up there praying or or get ugly. I love what Karen Wheaton said. She said, "Get ugly with him. Get ugly with him." Take it back. Get ugly. It was Karen Wheaton and, oh, I'm sorry, Judy. I don't remember her last name. Lord, God help me. But I know it was Judy. It was um, just the women's conference that she just had recently. Go watch that. I, I suggest some because you will get a lot of knowledge from that and understanding. And she also says, she says, Worry breathes doubt, and doubt is a grievous sin. Doubt is an assault against the character of God. It questions whether or not he will keep his word. Let's not doubt God and what he's going to do. Let's believe and, and trust him. Once you, like she said, once you start to doubt, worry, Whatever you're going through, cast that doubt and those burdens on the court on God. Start praying, start praying, coming up against those thoughts, telling them to cast, taking in captivity and casting down every high, wicked imagination that exalts itself above the word of God. Take it into captivity because the devil has no control over you. It's, it's what we give him. No, you have the authority over him. He is beneath you. He is your footstool, not the other way around. Whew, glory be to God. See, every time I get on here, God is so good. <laughs> I end up wanting to talk about one thing and the Holy Spirit of happy go somewhere else. So I don't think today I'm going to, you know, break it into videos. We're just going to let the Holy Spirit flow. Let him go ahead and flow and let's get started in the, you know, what he originally placed on my heart. Um, let's see. So I want to start with, uh, revelations, get back on track about, you know, us living in the last days and false prophets and things like that. He kept placing this scripture on my heart for the past couple of weeks at that. And maybe I, you know, I wasn't seeking him well enough until I got into it. And, you know, I started just, you know, Lord, what are you, <laughs> I started giving him his word back. And then I started praying, you know, give me revelation of what, you know, you're trying to say to me. So revelations chapter 16, verse 13, I may just stop there or continue, but we can go ahead and start there. And it says, and I saw three unclean spirits that look like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, in the false prophet. Verse 14 says, These are demonic spirits that perform signs and go out to all the kings of the earth to assemble them for battle on the great day of, God, of the God Almighty. 
Behold, verse 15, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who remains awake and clothed so that he will not go naked. Let his shame be exposed. And they assembled the kings in the place that in Hebrew is called Armagdon. I think I'm saying that. Hopefully I'm saying that right. But we all know that Jesus already spoke about that there would be false prophets that go out into the world. And I believe God is warning us in this time that we need to be prayerful. We need to be ready. We need to continue to be in, you know, the word says pray without ceasing. We need to always be in prayer. If you thought about it, a lot of a lot of testimonies I've been hearing lately and a lot of things I've been seeing God doing just based off of my own observation, God has been moving people out of the workplace into ministry. God has been giving, setting people up with their own businesses, leading them on a different path of what they originally sought out for themselves. God is doing something mightily indifferent. And see... You have, in this time, day and time, like I spoke before, like a lot of people are, you know, speaking the word of God. They are delivering good news, but is it what God say said, or is it this familiar spirits that's speaking through them? That's why we need to have discernment and wisdom. And I believe God in, in this time, since we are in the last days, is that he is about to, he it just, I just really want to focus on this one scripture because this is the only scripture I just continue to read on my own, but focus on this scripture 13. And he said, and I saw three unclean spirits that looked like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast and the false prophets. Be diligent, discern everything. Be ready. Stay in the presence of God. Stay in the presence of God. Don't be deceived in this time, in this hour. And I'm just going to go on with the other scriptures that he gave me because they kind of coincide with what he said as well. And we can go to 1 Corinthians uh, 12, verse 3. And 12, verse 3 says, Therefore, I inform you that no one who is, and this is how you can, and this is basically discerning. And also with, when God places the Holy Spirit on you, it's a spiritual gift for you to be able to discern. The Holy Spirit will not lead you wrong. Let me go ahead. Therefore, I inform you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit, the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And see, like I told you, I had sought God for the revelation. And this is what he gave me concerning that 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 scripture, Revelation verse um, chapter 16, verse 13. This is what he spoke to me. I inform you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. We need to be We need to be seeking the Holy Spirit for guidance, for instructions. Because that is our comforter, that is our guide. And let's see, let's go, let's go ahead and see the other revelation word that God gave me as well concerning that scripture. And that is, we're still in Corinthians. That is Corinthians 16, verse 22. And he says, if anyone does not love the Lord, let him be under a curse. Come, O Lord. And God is speaking in this moment to these false prophets that's out here um, portraying that, you know, God said this and God said that. And this is coming from the Lord. Tread lightly. Tread lightly. 
Galatians 8 through 9. He says, But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be under a curse. Be careful. You're saying what you don't say what God has said or God has sent you and you know he has not sent you because you are cursing yourself. You are cursing yourself. And he says, as we have said before, so now I say it again. If anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you receive, let him be under a curse. God is not playing. God is not playing in this time. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. And if you are, repent. Give your life back to the Lord. Come into repentance because God is not playing in this time. He kept putting this word on my heart. So I believe that he is urging that this word be released. He wants his word to be released. And he also gave me another scripture today, um, Hebrews 13, verse 17. So if someone's coming to you, or a, a, someone that's a teacher or a guide, a, a, someone is, let me just get into it. It says, obey your spiritual leader and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your soul. And they are accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be for your benefit. God is holding us accountable. And we are to deliver the word and to do what God has called us to do. We are hold, held accountable for not only our souls, but your soul as well. And I believe that's why he was putting this on my heart about these um, these scriptures and the spiritual gifts that God gives us. That we are supposed to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us and seek revelation as to what God is supposed to want us to, to do. We have to, if you are, you know not and you know that you are not preaching the word of god and you're seeking other ways to you know to let me see you know um mediums or anything like that repent come up out of that come up out of that because you are misleading god's children and he's not playing with you he's not playing with any of us Especially if you're saying that it is coming from God and you know truly it is not coming from him. Repent. Give your life to the Lord. Come from up under that spiritual wickedness. So I'm going to end this video here. And I pray that this has educated you because it was a revelation to me to want to share with you as well. So I pray that you have a blessed day and I pray that the, um, God covers over you and your family and keep you guys safe in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a blessed day.